Hey guys, welcome back to the Red Monkey Show. I'm Alex. Hope you're staying safe and well wherever you are. Today, I have another Elementor tutorial, and today I'm going to be talking about a very special plugin called Woo Elementor. And as you can imagine, this is a plugin specifically for people who have Elementor websites and are running WooCommerce on them. So with this plugin, you can customize everything WooCommerce related, such as the My Account page, your shopping page, the cart page, the checkout page, uh, the thank you page that's, that's displayed when a customer buys a product, things like that. And the good news here is that you have both a free version and a paid version of the plugin and the free version is actually really awesome. Now with the free version of the plugin, you can customize your shopping page, you can customize the cart page, you can customize the My Account page, you even have access to all the elements that you can use to create the single product template. The challenge though here is that with the free version, you cannot create templates, which means that if you wanna make use of those elements, and let me just show you what those elements are, those elements, you have access to them. They are elements like the uh, product short description, product title, product variations. If you wanna make use of these types of elements, you will have to either use the paid version of Elementor, the paid version of Woo Elementor, or maybe you, you got lucky and you found a free add-on that allows you to create a template uh, for your single products. But regardless of that, the free version is still mighty awesome. Now with the paid version of the plugin, well, you can customize the checkout page as well. Uh, you can create uh, different kinds of templates for your header, your footer, your single products, your product variations, and so on. Basically, you have access to a whole lot more features and uh, options. And of course, at a glance, you can see the major differences between the uh, free version and the paid version of the plugin. So coming up in this tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through, first of all, what you can accomplish with the free version of the plugin, and then at the end, I will show you what you can accomplish with the paid version of the plugin. In my humble opinion, like I said, this might be one of the very best uh, Elemental add-ons for WooCommerce. Now, just to let you know, I am an affiliate for them, which means that if you decide to buy Woo Elemental using my link, which you'll find in the description box below, I'm gonna get a small commission. It's a great way to support me. So thank you. If you want, if you're gonna buy Wu Elemental, please use my affiliate link. And I should also mention that currently, right now, they're running a very special promotion for the year 2021, where if you use the coupon code Hello2021, you will get a 25% discount. It ends in four days as, as of the time of me recording this video. So if you want to make use of Wu Elemental, I would highly recommend that you get yourself uh, a paid copy ASAP. So Without wasting any more time, let's get started with the free version of Woo Elemental, and then at the end, I'll show you how to make use of the paid version of Woo Elemental. Let's get started. Alrighty, let's take a look at the free version of Woo Elemental, and when you install and activate the plugin, you will find Woo Elemental here in your backend. You go there, and then on the widgets, you will now be able to see all the widgets available for us to use, and they do have a filter up here where you can go with free. So you see all the widgets available for free and you can click on all to activate all of them. And as you can see, uh, there's a lot of them. So let's go ahead now to save our settings. Okay. And let me introduce you to the website. It's called Fashionista and I do have several uh, products in here. Now let's try to create our own uh, default shopping page where we're going to list all our products. Now the thing is, you cannot edit the default shopping page created by WooCommerce. As such, we're gonna to have to create a different page with a different name and then edit that page using the Woo Elemental element. So I'm gonna go back to the back end, okay? And let's add a new page. And we can call this page, uh, let's say gallery, for example. I do, we can call it gallery, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead to publish it first of all. Okay, now I'm going to click on Edit with Elementor. So now let's create our own custom shopping page using the elements provided by Woo Elementor. And as you can see, they are right here. And we have Woo Elementor Shop. So you have four different ways of displaying your products. You have the Shop Classic, which is quite possibly my favorite. And as you can see right now, you have the featured image of the product you will have the name of the product as well as the price, and then you have the uh, wish list button as well as the add to cart button. And of course, you know, under the settings in here, you can change the query, 
you can decide to go with a custom query where you can then choose how many products per page and of course maybe you want to show products from a very specific category you will list them in here or maybe you want to exclude products from a certain category you have that option in here as well and you have other kinds of settings like the product image where you can show or hide it if you prefer you have the sale ribbon that you can display products on sale you have the stock ribbon you have the cart settings as well things like that so you have all these options to modify how your products will be displayed and of course you have the styling options as well and so on but let's go back to the other elements available we have the shop standard which has a different style so now you can see this is different from the shop classic and you also have the shop curvy which i honestly don't like because now you have the images inside of our rounded uh, borders i mean it's all relative you might like this particular style you can go for it if you prefer and last but not least we have the shop slider where you have your uh, images or products displayed uh, in a slide. I'm going to go with the standard uh, shop classic. Okay, so I'm going to stick with this one and uh, there you go. So these are the elements available for creating your shopping page, but you also have the very useful uh, Woo Elemental filter that would allow your customers to filter products based on maybe price or something like that. So let me show you how this works. You're going to drag the filter horizontal and I'll put this just above the uh, products. And now you're going to have the filter where your customers can filter by price, sort, and then you have the order options. And of course, in here, uh, you can change the title to something else. You can uh, change the alignments as well of your buttons. But then right here, this is where things begin to get very interesting. You see down here and now from here, you'll have access to all the settings for the filter element. Of course, you can change the title if you want to. You can choose to hide the title. And of course, you can change the button alignments as well. And then show the price, the sorting button, order button, and so on. But then right here at the bottom, this is where things get very interesting. So you can add price ranges where your customers will be able to sort products based on a particular price range. So the default right here is 0 to 1999. Nine. That's because I do have a product in here. Uh, that costs uh, $1,999. Uh, so what I can do is I can click inside here and I can make some changes. So I can say minimum price of, uh, let's say, uh, $5 to the maximum price of, let's say, uh, $10. All right. And then I can add a new price range right here. And then I can call this one the minimum price from $11 to let's say maximum of $100. Let me add one more price range and, and call this one from uh, $101 to $1,999, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead now and I can update this, all right? And now let's actually view the page as it is. Let me open this in a new tab and show you what it looks like. So from here right now, our customers can come in here, they can view our products, okay? And then from here, they can click on price and then choose the price range. So let's go with between 11 and 100. And then they can click on apply. And now they will have access to all the products between uh, $11 and uh, $100, as you can see. So this is a very, 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 very useful uh, element, the filter element. Let's go back in here and let's take a look at what else we do have. Uh, you do have access to the elements for the single product but unfortunately it won't really work that well on your shopping page because these are meant for the single product uh, pages so it's yeah it's not really gonna work so i'm not gonna spend much time talking about um that right here you have uh, additional elements that you could potentially use uh like the pricing table uh the pricing table basics so let me just show you how it looks like you drop your pricing table in here and you can add things like features. Uh, you can change the uh, features or rather the items uh, under each particular table. You can change the pricing, things like that. Now, of course, if you want to create multiple columns for your uh, pricing tables, what you can do is, let me just first of all delete this one. What you want to do first of all is you go to basic, drop the inner section element, and now from here, 
you can begin to add your pricing tables into uh, as many columns as you want. So you can add the very first uh, pricing column right here into the first column. And then you can do the exact same thing. You can add the second pricing column uh, right here into the second column. And uh, there you go. You can now come in here and begin to customize uh, each particular section. So you do have that option. Let's take a look at the remaining uh, elements in here as well. Uh, let me scroll down. You also have the Woo Elementor related products elements, but these are also uh, much better with the single product pages as opposed to the shopping pages. So I'll skip that one. And then right here, of course, you have the image gallery as well, where you can create uh, galleries for your products. So you click on gallery fancy box as an example, you drop it in here. And then from here, you can choose the number of columns. You can then click on gallery in here, and then you can choose your images. So you click on the plus button right here. You go to your media library. Let's just select uh, a few products in here. Let's create a gallery, insert the gallery, and uh, there you go. So you can create different kinds of galleries as well. Uh, let me scroll back down here and show you. Uh, you do have the gallery LC light box. You have the gallery box lighter as well uh, and so on. So that's pretty much how you could create your shopping page using the uh, free version of Woo Elementor. Another page we could create with the free elements provided by Woo Elementor is going to be the cart page. Now, this is the default cart page created by WooCommerce. I have added two different products. However, unlike the shopping page created by WooCommerce, we can actually edit the cart page itself. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on edit with Elementor naturally. Let's go over to the back end. And the first thing you want to do is you want to remove the default code added by WooCommerce. Uh, it's going to be this particular short code in here, WooCommerce underscore cart. Uh, you can just go ahead and remove this section holding that code. So we now have a blank page uh, with nothing in it. Now I'm going to go ahead and close all these sections right here. And let's go all the way to the Woo Elemental Cart section. And we have three major sections in here. We have the card items, card overview, and coupon form, all of which work really well. I'm going to drag in the card items first. And now we have the products that have been added to the cart. We have the category, the featured image, the price, quantity, and subtotal. We also have the coupon code box right here, the update card button, back to shop button, as well as proceed to checkout already. This is looking much better than the default uh, card page created by WooCommerce. But of course, we have additional options in here. We can hide the thumbnail or we can hide the category of our products and so on. All right, let's go back in here. We also have the cart overview that will simply display the total price of all the products in the cart, which is what we have right here. And last but not least, we do have the coupon form, which ideally you could place in between the cart items and the cart total. So this is exactly what it looks like. Now, we already have a coupon code box inside of the very first element. So to avoid any confusion, it's best you hide uh, either one of these two. I would recommend you go with the second one though, because the second one is much bigger and uh, your customers will, will be able to easily see the box uh, much better than the first one in here. So we can go back to the first element, the cart items element. And then when you have the bottom sections, you click in there and now you'll see the coupon area. You simply choose to hide the area and now it's no longer there. And there you go. So now we can update the page. Let's go ahead now, view the page, and there you go. Already looking much, much, much better than the default uh, card page created by WooCommerce. Let's now take a look at the paid version of Woo Elementor. And as you can imagine, you're going to have access to a whole lot more elements as well as features. And at a glance, you can see right now the additional fields provided for you by the pro version of Woo Elementor. You have the shop elements right here. You have a new filter element. You have more pricing tables, related products as well. And of course, you can also create a custom checkout page and you have additional buttons like your wish list, our basic menu, dynamic tabs, as well as sales notification. So going back to our gallery page, let me show you the new shopping elements that we have access to. Let me first of all remove the shop classic. 
So we do have the shop trendy, which is very interesting. Basically, the design here is that when a user hovers on the product uh, featured images, you kind of have this animation effect where the price and then the title uh, will show up from no, from the bottom. So it's kind of like a very, very nice effect, which of course you can uh, change if you want to. Let's go back. Let's remove the shop trendy. We also have the shop flip. Again, very, very interesting way. Take a look at this. Okay, so when the user, of course, hovers on the featured images, they flip to the other side and then the user now sees the shop description of the product as well as the uh, watch list, wish list, as well as the add uh, to cut buttons. And of course, uh, you can customize the effects. You can change the background colors and things like that. So a very, 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 very cool way of displaying your products on your shopping page. Let's take a look at some other ones. Let me remove this one. We also have the shop curvy horizontal, which is again, rather interesting. It's similar to the shop curvy, but then right now it's going to be in an horizontal format. And I'm sure you've not seen many shopping pages that look like this. That's because this is kind of very, very rare, but nevertheless, this could work with a few more uh, customizations, maybe making the titles a bit bigger, making the font size a bit bigger, things like that. You could have a very, very unique looking uh, shopping page. Let me remove this one and show you one more. We do have the shop beauty. Let me drag that one and show you what this one looks like. And here's exactly uh, how it looks. This is very, very interesting. I mean, some of the designs that you get with the Woo Elemental plugin, it's it's really quite something because you don't get too many shopping pages on the internet uh, looking like this. So of course, you can again customize how it's going to look like. You simply come down here to style. Okay, and then you'll have access to things like editing the product description, the image, the background colors. You have access to a very wide range of options to fully customize how your shopping page is going to look like. And of course, finally, you're also going to have access to uh, some new pricing tables like the uh, pricing table regular. You have the pricing table smart. You also have the pricing table uh, fancy as well. Let me quickly show you how that looks like. It's right here, pricing table fancy. There you go. So you've got like this very, very big circle with the price per month. And then you have the features on the other particular plan. And then you have the purchase uh, button. So again, you have a lot more options to customize your shopping page as well as add different types of pricing tables uh, with the paid version of Woo Elementor. One major benefit of using the paid version of Woo Elementor is that you will have the ability to create our custom templates. Now, if you don't know how to create custom templates, I do have a dedicated video here on YouTube showing you how to do so. But let me quickly show you what you can do with Woo Elementor Pro. I'm going to go to add new and then right here, because we have the pro version, we can create templates for our header, footer, product archive, single product, and then the tab template. I'm going to choose the single product. Let's go with the single product template name, click on create template. And then let me first of all, add the inner section element right here. And now I'm going to go all the way down to the section for our single product. And of course, right here, we have the product title. Let's drag and drop that just above our two columns. So we have the title of the product called blazer. Let's go back and we can now choose the thumbnail for the product and we can drop that into the left column. So I have product thumbnail. I'll drop that right there. And of course you can choose the image size. You can also add the on click function to zoom so that when the user clicks on the image, it will zoom out and give the full sized uh, image on display. Let's go back. Uh, what else do we have in here? We have the product shot description, which I will drop on the second column. So we have the description right there. We also have things like the product SKU, which we can add. Uh, let's also add the product categories. Let's also add the product tags as well. And of course, we are also going to add the add to cut button, which is what we'll have right here. Let's drop that one right there. And we also have the uh, wish list button so that users can add the product to the wish list if they want to. It's right here. Add to wish list. I'll drop that uh, right here. Let me give you a very, very quick tutorial. If you want to display the add to cart and wishlist buttons side by side, let me show you how to do so. But before we do that, 
Notice that the add to cart text is, it is a bit more padding because it's right up there with the borders. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the edit button for the add to cart element. I'm going to go to style and then right here where you have the button for padding, I'm simply going to add some padding around. So let's go with uh, eight pixels. Now you can see there is more space between the text and its borders looking good. Now, if you want to display the add to cart and then the wishlist wish list button side by side, I'm going to go over to the advanced section for the add to cart element. I'm going to go to position and I'm going to go to width and I'm going to choose the inline auto. Okay. And now I'm going to click on the wishlist button itself and I'm going to make the same change right there. I'm going to go to advanced, go to position go to the width and then choose our uh, in line. But of course I can now add uh, some margin to separate it from the add to cut button. So I'll go to advanced and then margin. I'm going to click on it right here. Margin 10 pixels. So, so we can push the wishlist button just a little bit to the right of the add to cut button. Uh, make sure you click on the uh, link values together button break that chain so that 10 pixels isn't added to the top right and bottom sides as well and uh there you go you can also add additional elements like the related products right here uh related products classic uh standard uh products trendy you can add all of those uh just underneath the main product page uh, if you want to you can of course add uh, other elements from your basic section, from your general section, things like that. And you can customize your single product page as much as you want. Now, another page that can be customized with the Woo Elementor Pro version is going to be the checkout page. And just like with the cart page, this is a traditional uh, WooCommerce page created by default, but we can actually edit it using Woo Elementor. So I'm going to go ahead now, click on edit with Elementor. And just like when we edited the cart page, I'm going to go ahead and remove the initial code, which is the WooCommerce underscore checkout code right here. Let's remove that so that we have a blank page. And now let's take a look at the elements available from Woo Elementor for the checkout page. And it is right down here. Okay. Let me just uh, close this section so we don't need. To make it easier for us to navigate our way around. And okay, last but not least, the cart section. All right, so we have the checkout section right here and we have the billing address, shipping address. Let's go ahead and add them. So first of all, I'm going to add the billing address. And of course, uh, you can customize the kinds of fields that will be available. So right here where you have billing fields, you can remove unnecessary fields like the company name, for example. Uh, the apartment, uh, the phone number, you can remove all of those. However, you can actually add your own custom fields as well. Simply click on add item down here. And just as an example, maybe we wanted their fax number. Just as an example, I can type in fax number and then I can choose the input type. So right here, I'm going to go with number because it is a fax number. And if you want to, you could make the field uh, required by simply leaving it on yes uh, down here. So you can add custom fields if you want to. Let me remove that one, go back to our elements. And of course, we also have the shipping address that we can add so that just in case uh, the billing address is different from the shipping address, the customer can click on the box right here. And now they will have to fill in details for their shipping address. And just like with the billing fields, you can also edit the custom shipping fields, add your own, remove some of the default ones if you want to. I'm going to go ahead and remove the uh, shipping address. Let's just keep it on billing address for now. Let's scroll down here and we have the order notes as well, which would simply be like this. You know, if you have any optional notes for, uh, if the customer has any additional notes for you, uh, you can provide them the opportunity to do so right here. Uh, you also have the our order review, let's drop that there. So we have the order review, the product, the subtotal, and of course the total as well. And we also have the uh, order pay. Now order pay basically will show you kind of like the order review as well as the uh, payment methods. So in a way, the order review element is actually two elements in one. 
it consists of the uh, order review as well as the payment methods. So you can either just use the order pay alone, or if you want to, you could use the order review and then the payment methods are uh, elements. So let me remove the uh, order pay element. So we have the order review and now I can add the payment methods where the user will now be able to uh, add PayPal or pay with PayPal or with credit cards. Now here is something very, very important. You might get this message saying a hey, problem with checkout. Uh, are you facing any issues? You know, stuff like that. What you want to do is very, very, very important. Come up here to the section holding all your fields for the checkout page. You click on the edit section button and then right here where you have Woo Elementor, you click in there and then say contains checkout. Yes. Okay. Very, very important. Make sure this one is set to yes. And now if you go back down here, uh, you're not going to have any problems anymore with uh, PayPal or credit cards. Your customers will be able to use PayPal and uh, their credit cards. So let's go back. And uh, there you go. All right. So in addition to creating the custom checkout page, you can also create a custom thank you page that will be displayed once the customer has uh, made their order. And here's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to drag the thank you page right here, the thank you element right here to a new section entirely. Very, very important. I'm going to drop that in there. And then right here, this is going to be the default message that will be displayed. Thank you. Your order has been received. You can customize the message right here, of course. Uh, you can also customize the text for the order info. And then you have the order details. But you can make things very interesting by even adding like a funny image just to thank the customers. So check this out. I'm going to go over to basic. I'm going to grab the image element right here and I'm going to drop it right here at the very top. And I'm going to choose this very funny image I you know, found on the internet. It's basically Ron Burgundy saying thank you, uh, stay classy, you know, just for the fun of it. I'll choose the full size as well. And now very, very important. We don't want to display all of these on the actual checkout page itself. We only want to display them once the customer has made their order. So what do we do? We're going to go to the main section again, holding this image and then holding the uh, order information and details. I'm going to click inside there where you have the edit section. And just like before, I'm going to come down here to Woo Elemental and I'm going to say contents. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So now this section right here will only be displayed on the thank you page. Let's go ahead now and update our page. And let's take a look at an example. I'm going to add this blouse right here to the cart. Let's view the cart page. Now let's proceed to checkout. I've already filled out the fields in here. As you can see, I'm going to choose our credit cards for Stripe. And I'm just use the testing uh, number, which is 4242424242. Let's add a month, which would be January. 2021 and then one, two, three. Let's go ahead now, place our order. And now check this out. We're going to get the thank you page coming up. And there you go. Now we have the image of Ron Bugget and say thank you, stay classy, as well as the order information and order details for the customer. So that's how you can create your custom checkout page and thank you page using the Woo Elemental plugin. One more amazing feature provided by the paid version of Woo Elementor is going to be the ability to copy and paste your designs from one website to another. Now, I do have the Woo Elementor Pro installed on another site here, which is the cool store.taskcreator.com. And let's say, for example, I wanted to copy the design of the shopping page right here. What I'm simply going to do is I'll right click on the button itself, right click. And then right here, you'll see cross domain copy, cross domain paste. I'm going to go with cross domain copy. And then I'm simply go, I'm going to go to the other website right now. And where I want to paste it, I'll right click. And then just like that, I'm going to go ahead and simply paste. And there you go. So with Woo Elementor Pro, you can easily uh, copy your designs from one website and then paste them onto another website, saving you plenty of time. Well, there you have it. We've come to the end of today's tutorial where I covered how to make use of both the free version 
and the paid versions of the Wu Elemental plugin. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Share this video with anyone who may feel might benefit from it. And of course, a gentle reminder, if you're going to buy the paid version of Wu Elemental, please use my affiliate link in the description box below. If you have any questions about anything I talked about in this video, put them down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them as quickly as I can. My name is Alex. It's been a pleasure. Stay safe out there and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.